Hello everyone. That was an amazing intro. Um, this is Pat. We're playing Planescape Torment Enhanced Edition. And that intro still blows me away to this very day. Very, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. I, I really don't know what's happening. It shows you one thing, another thing, another thing. It blows you away. But uh, I've known about this game for many years. Ever since I was... I was in high school, I think. Um, I've heard about this game, and ever since I got interested in Baldur's Gate, I was looking for uh, other games to play, and this one was suggested. And um, yeah, it's a game I've always been meaning to finish, but I've never finished it. So, uh, my uh, my aim here today: start a playthrough and finish it off on YouTube. And. Uh, we're going to make our character, our, our nameless one. We're going to max out his wisdom. That's really important. Uh, max out intelligence, because that's also quite important. Probably put some points in charisma, because uh, there's a lot of talking in this game. So, all these stats are... Uh, we're not going to be very good at fighting. We're not going to be very good at combat, but... You know? Doesn't really matter. Here we are, we're waking up on the slab. With a nameless one. Hey, Chief. You okay? You playing corpse or you putting the blinds on the dusties? <laughs> I thought you were a debtor for sure. Who are you? Uh, who am I? How about you? Dad. Who are you? I don't know, I can't remember. Yeah, we, we don't really know anything about ourselves at the moment. You can't remember your name? Huh. Well, next time you spend a night in this burg, go easy on the bub. Name's Mort. I'm trapped in here too. Trapped? Yeah, since you haven't had time to get your legs yet, here's the chant. I've tried all the doors and this room is locked tighter than a chastity belt. We're locked in... where? What is this place? It's called the mortuary. A big black structure with the architectural charm of a pregnant spider. Mortuary? What? Am I dead? Not from where I'm standing, you got scars are plenty though. Looks like some Burke painted you with a knife. All the more reason to get this place to laugh before whoever carved you up comes back to finish the job. Scars? How ba bad are they? Well, the carvings on your chest aren't too bad, but the ones on your back. Mort pauses. Say, it looks like you've got a whole tattoo gallery on your back, Chief. Spells out something. Tattoos on my back? What do they say? Heh. <laughs> looks like you come with directions. Mort clears his throat. Let's see. It starts with, I know you feel like you've been drinking a few ke kegs of stick wash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that will shed some light in the dark of the matter. Farad can fill you in on the rest of the chant. He's not in the dead book already. Farad, does it say anything else? Yeah, there's a bit more. Mort pauses. Let's see. It goes on. Don't lose the journal or we will be up in the sticks again. Whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you, or they'll put you on a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farad. No wonder my back hurts. There's a damn novel written there. As for that journal I'm supposed to have with me, was there one with me while I was lying here? No. You were stripped to the skins when you arrived here. Besides, looks like you got enough of a journal penned on your body. What about Farad? Do you know him? Nobody I know, but then again, I don't know many people. Still some Burks got to know where to find Farad. Uh, once we get out of here, that is. How do we get out of here? Well, all the doors are locked, so we'll need the key. Chances are one of the walking corpses in this room has it. Walking corpses? Yeah, the mortuary keepers use dead bodies as cheap labor. The corpses are dumb as stones, but they're harmless and won't attack you unless you attack first. Uh... So I should attack one of the corpses and loot it for the key? Well, before you do that, arm yourself first. I think there's a scalpel on one of the shelves around here. Alright, I'll look for one. One last thing. Those corpses are as slow as molasses, but getting punched by one of them is like being kissed by a battering ram. If they start getting an edge on you, remember you can run, and they can't. Use it to keep some distance if you need to recover. Alright, thanks for the advice. Alright. So as you can see here, there's going to be a lot of talking in this game. Like, so much talking. I should have done this before recording, but... have to, uh... Should have... Done all these options before, but... Oh, yeah, there we go. Now we can get around a lot quicker. 
some bandages. Just some rails running through the whole room. It looks like the slabs in the room can be moved around on these rails. So as you can see here. Alright. Alright, you found the scalpel. Now go get those corpses and don't worry, we'll stay back and provide valuable tactical advice. Alright. <laughs> Time to introduce these corpses to the second death then. I'm gonna equip myself. Uh uh, quick items. Definitely gonna put bandages as a quick item. There's a lot of reading in this game, and um, this game is also pretty dark compared to like other Infinity Engine games like Baldur's Gate and all that. Um, you can click on pretty much everything and give you a description. It's like dried blood covers a slab surface. This slab is covered with dried blood and other remains. Got this too. Fucking. Stretched out corpse, like ooh, yucky. Corpse looks like someone turned it inside out. Machine at the head of the table has peeled the skin off the forehead to give direct access to the skull. And this guy's got his like crotch exposed. It's very nice. Zombie workers. Have to talk with these. This corpse stops and stares blankly at you as you approach. The number seven eighty two is carved into its forehead, and his lips have been stitched closed. Faint smell of formaldehyde emanates from the body. That reminds me of they live. Uh, examine the corpse. Oh, I got the corpse the key. Very, very first attempt. Very good. Um, I need that key. Yeah. Oh, camels. Got him. His head peeled off. 825. It was great talking to you. <laughs> Farewell. Five six nine. Okay. Um let's check other things too. Have the yeah, it does too. Lovely. It's like one of the best features of that they put in these games, that you can highlight everything. S some advice, Chief. I'd keep it quiet from here on. No need to put any more corpses in the dead book than necessary. Especially the femmes. Us killing them might draw the caretakers here. Who are these caretakers? They call themselves the Dustmen. You can't miss them. They have an obsession with black and rigor mortis of the face. They're an adult bunch of ghoulish death worshippers. They believe everybody should die. Sooner, better than later. I'm confused. Why do these Dustmen care if I escape? Weren't you listening? I said the Dusties believe everybody's got to die. Sooner, better than later. You think the corpses you've seen are happier in the dead book than out of it? The corpses I've seen here. Where do they all come from? Death visits the plains every day, Chief. These shambles are all that's left of the poor sods who sold their bodies to the caretakers after death. Uh, well, you said something about making sure I didn't kill any female corpses. Why? What? Are you serious? Look, Chief, these dead chits are the last chance for a couple of hardy bashers like us. We need to be chivalrous. No hacking them up for keys, no lopping their limbs off, things like that. Last chance? What are you talking about? Chief, they're dead. We're dead. See where I'm going? Eh, <laughs> eh. Eh? Eh? You can't be serious. Chief, we've already got an opening line of these limping ladies. We've all died but at least once. We'll have something to talk about. They'll appreciate men with our kind of death experience. Wait, didn't you say before that I'm not dead? Well, alright. You might not be dead, but I am. And from where I'm standing, I wouldn't mind sharing a coffin with some of these fine, sinewy cadavers I see here. Ward starts clacking his teeth as if in anticipation. Ugh. Of course, the caretakers would have to part with them first, and that's not likely. Alright, I'll try to remember that. Look, Chief, it's obvious you're still a little addled after you kiss with death. I've got two bits of advice for you. One, if you've got questions, ask me, alright? Alright. Second, if you're half as forgetful as you seem to be, start writing stuff down. Whenever you come across something that might be important, jot it down so you don't forget. Start a new one then, Chief. No loss. There's plenty of parchment and ink around here to last you. Alright. Use it to keep track of your movements. If you ever start to get cloudy on important things like who you are, or more importantly, who I am, use it to refresh your memory. All right, I got it. Let's go. Updated my journal. Gonna be hearing that noise a lot. Um, look at these zombies. Five ninety four. Doing anything later? And he's to stare at you. Yeah, the way she was looking at me, huh? You see that? The way she was following the curve of my occipital bone. You mean that blank-eyed beyond the grave stare? 
What? Are you blind? She was scouting me out. It was shameless the way she wanted me. Wanted you to go away. Yep. Yeah. You? Yeah, right. Trust me, chits. Beyond the grave, don't care about that, all that physicality, and I've got a body, and I'm more scarred and tough looking. They want guys with spirit. That's me, chief. You? Corpses like you are as common as a copper. <laughs> Whatever, more. Let's go. Jeez. It's been, it's been 12 minutes, and I've made it into the second room. So much talking in this game. Caved in with a club. Oof. Nasty wound you got there. Okay. <laughs> These are all these guys that feel like pork. Lumbering along a triangular path, once it reaches one of the corners of the triangle, pauses, then turns and staggers towards the next corner. Looks like someone forgot to tell this sword to stop walking the rule of freeze. What do you mean? Scorpions don't have much left in the attic, so they can't do more than one task at a time. When they're told to do something, they'll keep doing it until someone tells them to stop. This poor sword probably finished some task and they forgot to tell him. Who gives them their commands? Either one of the caretakers here, or else whatever necromancer raids them out of the dead book. Probably one of the caretakers here. They're the ones with the cheap. You need the cheap labor after all. Rule of freeze. My journal. I mean, one of those laws about the planes about things tend to happen in freeze, or everything's composed of free parts, or there's always free choices and so on and so forth. A load of watch, if you ask me. If you look for the a number, any number, and try to attach some great meaning to it, you're going to find plenty of coincidences. That is kind of true. I mean, there's a rule of three, sort of, real life as well. You know, people die, tend to die in threes. Uh, I want to examine the zombie a bit more. Why are you walking in a triangle? Yeah, he's not tell me. Quite rude. Quite honest. Okay. 396. Carrying a roll of bandages in a tanned. Mind if I borrow those bandages? Try and take the bandages from the zombie. Send the corpse again. Sorry about taking those bandages from you. It's just that I need them more than the bodies here. Yeah. Mine now. Ooh. The braid. <laughs> I like talking to the zombies. Number 1201. Got a note in his head. Mingled with the ichor in the zombie's mouth. If you try to pull the paper out through the cross stitches, it will tear the paper to shreds. Use the scalpel. Yeah. Definitely slice through the stitch to see in the corpse's mouth and the jaw sags open. You carefully pull the note from the corpse's mouth. Despite the condition of the paper, the writing on it still appears legible. Examine the corpse again. Sorry about slicing those stitches. Alright. I guess we gotta read this note. Oh boy. This is a foul smelling note retrieved from the mouth of one of the mortuary zombies. It looks like it was sewn into the corpse's mouth by accident. Despite its condition, yep. Please, to whatever dustman reads this, I beg of you. I know my legal obligation under the terms of the dead contract, but I am prepared to offer more than my signing fee if you'll cremate my body rather than raising it. I have arranged for this, for this note to be left with my body upon death. If you're reading this, then please use this note as instructed and accept the result in the exchange for my contract to duty. Let my contract number serve as the key. Looks like the corpse is too late to prevent the raising, but you notice beneath the writing is a diagram. Looks like the directions for folding the parchment into a strange pattern. Oh yeah, so we can use this. 201. Ah, oh, I get it. So one, two... One. One. <laughs> I screwed it up really badly. Um, I'll leave it alone for now because I'm not very good at these puzzles. Got some coins, some fist irons, a log book. I'm not even sure if I'm going to read that because I remember it's really long and there's lots of stuff in it. I know, that's alright. Huge logbook lists more tree procedures in a tight crab, crab script? Crab. Never heard that describing anything before. All shells entering the mortuary had to be delivered to the receiving room and logged with the scribe on duty before being embalmed or cremated. The records are to be checked to determine if the shell is one of the contracted and if so, do not prepare the shell. Move the shell around the preparation rooms. Contract, contact the scribe on duty and notify him that a contracted shell is to be raised. I'm guessing by shell they mean dead body. They call them. 
Be certain that a shell is thoroughly stripped of its possessions before being set to the preparation rooms. The contracted workers are intended for simple manual labor and do have the capacity to search and strap, strip a shell. Oh my god, there's so much reading. Uh, the faction is not responsible for any possessions lost or items stolen by collectors who have brought the shells to the mortuary. The shells' possessions are to be stored in the receiving room until an initiate can be sent to claim them. Please catalogue all possessions in the logbook. Following this list is thousands of entries of bodies that have been sent to the receiving room. As you flip through the rest of the book, however, you notice the last page has been cut out. Okay. Real shit. Um, am I talking to everyone here? On scene better days, yep. Not really, I'm not reading through these because, um, not much going on, to be quite honest. What the hell like all mummified? Look at that. Anything interesting going on? Ah, okay. Doll. Squad looks very old. His skin is wrinkled and has a slight trace of yellow like old parchment. Charcoal grey eyes lie within an angular face and a large white beard flows down the front of his robes like a waterfall. Breathing is ragged and irregular, but even his occasional coughing does not slow the scratching of his quill pen. Greetings. Whoa, Chief, what are you doing? I was going to speak with the scribe. You might know something about how I got here. Look, rattling your bone box with Dusty should be the last thing. Before Mort can finish his rant, the scribe begins coughing violently. After a moment or two, the coughing spell dies down and the scribe's breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. And we especially shouldn't be swapping the chant with sick Dusties. Come on, let's leave. The quicker we give this place a laugh, the better. Before Mort can finish, the scribe's grey eyes flicker to you. The weight of years hangs upon... The weight of years hangs upon, hangs heavy upon me. Sorry, I can't read. Restless one. He places down the quill. But I do not yet count deafness among my ailments. Restless one? Do you know me? Know you? I... There's a trace of bitterness in the scribe's voice as he speaks. I have never known you, restless one. No more than you have known yourself. Be silent for a moment. But you have forgotten, have you not? Who are you? There's always the question and the wrong question as always bows slightly, but the movement suddenly sends him into a bout of coughing. I... He pauses for a moment, catches his breath. I am Dahl. Alright, perhaps he can answer some questions. Updated my journal. Very well, what did you wish to know? What is this place? You're in the mortuary, restless one. Again, you have come. Before he can finish, Dahl breaks into a fit of coughing. After a moment, he calms himself and his breathing resumes its ragged wheeze. This is the waiting room for those about to depart the shadow of this life. Tell me about the mortuary. Where the dead are brought, yeah. True death. Okay. Shadow of life? Yes, a shadow. You see, restless one, this life, it is not real. Your life, my life, they are shadows. Flickerings are what life once was. This life is where we end up after we die, and here we remain. Trapped. Caged until we can achieve the true death. True death is non-existence, a state devoid of reason, of sensation, of passion. Dor coughs and then gives a ragged breath, a state of purity. Yeah. Sounds like oblivion, why would anyone want that? Worse than remaining in this shadow of what... Is it worse than remaining in this shadow of what life once was? I think not. Shadow of life... How did I get here? Dor snorts in contempt as if he finds the memory repugnant. Your mouldy chariot ferried you to the mortuary, restless one. You would think you were royalty based on the number of loyal subjects that lay stinking and festering upon the cart that carried you. I arrived here on a cart? My journal. Yes, your body was somewhere in the middle of the heap, sharing its fluids with the rest of the mountain of corpses. It all breaks into another violent fit of coughing, finally catching his breath minutes later. Your sensical, Farad was, as always, pleased to accept the few mouldy coffers that dumped a lot of you at the mortuary gate. Who is this Farad? He is a collector of the dead. Dahl draws a ragged breath and continues. We have such people in our city that scavenge the bodies of those who have walked the path of true death and bring them to us so that they may, may be interred properly. Where can I find this Farad? If, it, if events persist as they have, Restless One, you have much greater chance of Farad finding you and bringing you to us again before you find whatever ooze puddle he wallows in this time. Nevertheless, I must find him. A slight warning creeps into Dahl's tone. Do not seek our Farad, Restless One. I am certain that it will simply come full circle again with you. None the wiser than Farad, a few coppers richer. Accept death, Restless One. Do not perpetuate your circle of misery. 
I have to find him. Updated my journal. Gaul is silent for a moment. When he finally speaks, he seems to do so reluctantly. I do not know under which gutter stone Farad lairs at the moment, but I imagine he can be found somewhere beyond the mortuary gates in the hive. Perhaps someone there will know where you can find him. Doesn't sound like you like Farad much. There are some I respect, Restless One. Gaul takes a ragged breath and steadies himself. Farad is not one of them. He wears his ill repute like a badge of honor and takes liberties with the possessions of the dead. He is a knight of the post, cross-trading filth of the lowest sort. Yeah. Of the post? The knight of the post, Starkovs, a thief. All Farad brings to our walls comes stripped of little less of their dignity than they possessed in life. Farad takes whatever he may pry from their stiffening fingers. Did this Farad take anything from me? All pauses considering. Most likely, are you missing anything? Especially anything of value. His voice dips as he frowns. Not that Farad will take exception to anything that wasn't physically grafted to your body, and sometimes even that's not enough to give his greedy mind pause. I'm missing a journal. A journal. If it was any of value, then it's likely it lies in Farad's hands. Alright. You tell me how to get out of here. Hmm. The front gate is the most obvious exit, but they will not let anyone other than Dustman pass. Door breaks into a ragged coffin and then continues. One of the guides by the front gate has a key to it, but it is unlikely he will open it unless you are extremely persuasive. Uh, do you know who Updated I am? Updated my journal. I know scant little of you, Restless One. I know little more of those that have journeyed with you and who now lie in our keeping. All sighs. I ask that you will no longer ask others to join with you, Restless One. Where you walk, so walks misery. Let your burden be your own. There are others who journey with you? Updated my journal. Do you not know the woman's corpse interred in the memorial hall below? I had thought that she had travelled with you in the past. Thor looks like he is about to start coughing again, then catches his breath. Am I mistaken? Where is her body? The Northwest Memorial Hall on the floor below us. Check the... What, buyers? Beers there? I've heard of that word before. The name should be on the memorial plaques. Mayhap that will revive your memory. I don't know. I don't recall ever travelling with a woman. Thor makes no response to this. He simply stares at you in silence. Or you said there were others interred here who journeyed with me. Where are they? Doubtless there are, but I not know their names, nor where they lie. One such as you has left a path many have walked, and few have survived. Thor dresses around you. All dead come here. Some must have travelled with you once. Uh, what do you do here? I'm a scribe, a cataloguer of all the shells that come into the mortuary. Thor coughs again and takes a deep breath. As long as the stream of corpses flows through the mortuary, I shall remain at my post. You say that I have been here more than once. How is it that the dustmen do not recognize Updated me? My journal. I am the one that catalogues the shells that come to our horse restless one. Restless. The door breaks into a fit of coughing and steadies himself. Only I see the faces of those that lie upon our slabs. The dark of your existence lies safe with me. Jeez. What? Uh, you sound ill. I am close now to the true death, Restless One. It will not be long before I pass beyond the eternal boundary and find the peace I have been seeking. I tire of this mortal sphere. Dor, Dor gives a ragged sigh. Plains hold no... Plains hold... Ugh, I can't speak English. The plains hold no more wonders for one such as I. Eternal boundary? The boundary between the shadow of this life and the true death. Let me just get back to that other question. Might be some way I could help you. I do not wish to live forever nor live again, Versus One. I could not bear it. So be it. Farewell, Dol. As you turn to leave, Dol speaks. Know this, I do not envy you, Restless One. To be reborn as you would be a curse that I could not bear. You must come to terms of it. At some point your path will return you here. Dol coughs, the sound rattling in his throat. It is the way of all things flesh and bone, and perhaps we will meet again. Alright. Well, Spent a lot of time talking to him. It's going to be very slow at the start, but I'm sure it'll pick up as uh, more and more things happen. Huge corpse. He's got books on him. Old mortuary ledgers. Got a page. Read through it. You take a moment to read through the page. It's a list of the dead boys brought to the mortuary and logged in the receiving room. All the entries appear to be recent arrivals. Salmon the zombie again. And the books again. Yep, okay. Got another note to read. It was a long one. Um, 
Fifth night, drunk, chest wound, cause of death, mauling, a beast shy, collect the pox, free commons paid. Alright, I'm not gonna read through that, but guessing that these are items we can find. I was just noticed in my inventory I have an eyeball slot. I mean I've only got one eye. That that to me implies I've only got one eye. Oh look at the things. You already checked that one. This zombie's eyes are all stuffed up. Don't you get dizzy with your eyeballs facing like that? No. I don't know why I keep trying to talk with the zombies, it never works. Pictures. Needle and thread. Yeah, so we're just, we're just taking things from zombies. We're, we're taking things from the dead. Vision of its left leg, it looks like some sort of tomb rot or corpse mold is eaten through its knee. The corpse is wobbling unsteadily back and forth, trying to keep its balance. Give the corpse a push. <laughs> oh, there he goes. There's a crack. Oh. Left arm seems intact, it's stabbed from the torso during the fall, and doesn't appear to have been touched by the tomb rot that has spread through the rest of the body. Taking the arm. That is a weapon. One to six, crushing. I think it comes up as a club. I right, well, can beat the crap out of someone with these then. Alright, got this. Is this quickly. There we go. Alright. E. I. E. Veni. I don't know how to pronounce it. You see a slight young woman with pale features. The sunken flesh around her cheeks and neck makes her appear as if she is starving. She seems intent on dissecting the corpse in front of her, prodding the chest with a finger. Greetings. This woman does not respond. She seems too intent on the body in front of her. As you watch her work, you suddenly notice her hands. Her fingers are talons. Starting in and out of the corpse's chest cavity like knives and moving organs. What's wrong with your hands? The woman makes no Updated response. My journal. Is it tiefling? They pronounce it? I'm not sure. They've got fiend blood in their veins, usually cause some un ancestor of theirs shared knickers with one demon or another. Make some make some of them adult in the head and adult looking too. Tap the woman, get her attention. Woman jumps and whips around to face you. Her eyes are rotting yellow with small orange dots for pupils. As she sees you, her expression changes from surprise to irritation. She frowns at you. Uh greetings. Doesn't seem to have heard you. She leans forward, squinting as if she can't make you out. Whatever is wrong with her eyes must make her terribly nearsighted. You! She clacks her talon fingers together and makes a strange motion of her hands. Find Fred and embalming juice. Bring here to Eveen. Eveni. Go, go, go. Had some questions Updated first. My journal. She turns away. She makes no sign that she heard you. I mean, the dusty chit might be a bit short of hearing, Chief. Let's lay off, shall we? Alright. To find me some farming club. Alright, another zombie. I feel this is the one that's disguised. 821. Blinks and surprise. Hey? What? Why are you disguised as a corpse? Updated my journal. The zombie is trying to respond behind Stitch's lips. He has a peculiar, half frightened, half angry expression. Who are you? What do you want? Who are you? Zombie doesn't seem to have heard you. He looks you up and down for a few moments and frowns. What do you do here? His eyes narrow suspiciously. You spy on Dusties? Yeah, I'll lie. You spy? You would sell? Sell? Port breaks in and whispering by the powers. This perks an anarchist. Supposing it's a zombie's got to be the first got to be a first of those adult sods. Anarchist? Updated my journal. Anarchist, they're a faction. Mort looks like he's about to let loose a torrent of insults and notices a zombie staring at you both listening intently. They uh, want to liberate everyone from the chains of government. Tear down the old establish a new order with no order at all. Lie again. Nothing up a little pride behind his zombie disguise. Why again? Say what I see, nothing more. What have you seen the dustmen do? Nothing. They do nothing. Can't find nothing. Dead. Dead. 
Just dead people. Dusty's doing nothing. Eyes narrowing conviction. Still I watch. I see. There was something else I wanted to ask you. You know someone named Farron? Uh, Arun? Zombie br bounce briefly in fort. Me. He, he lived in Hive somewhere. Shakes his head. Not know where. He frowns again. Dusty's very mad. They not like fat Arun. Hive. Slums outside the place. Why don't the dustman like Farron? my journal. He's a collector. Brings debtors to mortuary. Tells them to dustman. Brings lots of debtors. Dusty's not know where he gets debtors. Thinks he's putting Burks in dead book. Ah, uh, what? He's saying that this Farad Burke has been selling a lot of debtors' corpses to the dustman. That's what collectors do. They gather dead bodies and sell them to the dustman. Sounds like this Farad's been selling so many debtors that the Dusties think he's been putting hivers in the dead book before the hour's up. You know, killing people. I see. In a journal. Do no some Burke peel you? Uh, what? You want to know if somebody robbed you? I see. Uh, how'd you get to look like that? Me good at disguise. Me also got scars. Me wear lots of embalming fluid. Me make good, zombie. Zombie giggles through stitched lips, then taps his head. Dusty stupid. Yeah, they're the stupid ones, alright. Sarcasm's evidently lost on the zombie who nods eagerly. Stupid Dusty's me make good zombie. Doesn't that hurt? That disguise is pretty good. Alright. Forty would have farming fluid on him. I remember him having it on him, but maybe Alright. There we go, got embalming fluid right now. There's two jars of farming fluid. I've never actually done the disguise of the zombie bit before. Chain is locked. Forced it. Yeah. Earring. Poppy earring looks ancient. Oddly enough, there doesn't seem to be a hook or any means of actually attaching it to your ear. A series of strange grooves have been carved on the inside of the earring, however, which might merit a closer examination. It looks extremely old. Examine the grooves. The grooves are evenly spaced along the inside of the earring. Upon closer examination, they remind you of small things. They're definitely man-made, but you can't figure out what they were intended for. Alright, so I can't unsolve the mystery of the earring yet. Might be locked though. Yeah, need a key. Um, so I have the option of going up, going down. But uh, before we do that, the lady again. My embalming floor. Watch her study the motions of her hands. Updated my journal. As you study the motion of Avani's hands, feel a prickling along your scalp, and suddenly you find your vision swimming, blurring, until you're standing in front of a freshly slain corpse, rigor mortis making a mockery of its smile. The number 42 has been stitched onto its scalp. The zombie is lying on a slab, and you have just finished stitching up its chest. You have placed something inside, something that may prove useful if you come this way again. Echo, I'll keep these things safe and wait for my return. Gotta find another four two. The memory of your voice is an echo, strange and hollow to your ears. You cross your arms in front of your chest, and to your surprise, a corpse does too. After a moment, its hands fall back to its sides, and as it does, the vision fades. Until you are watching Aveni's hands make their stitching motions once more. Apo, get her attention. Uh, Brandon and Barman. Updated my journal. Without missing a beat, Aveni snaps the thread from your hands and hooks it around one of her talons and begins sewing up the corpse's chest. She then takes the embalming fluid and begins to apply a layer to the corpse. Wait. Within minutes, she is finished. She clicks her talons and turns to face you. To your surprise, she extends her hand and drags her talons on your arms and chest. Keep playing, zombie. Looks like you have a new friend, Chief. You two need some time together, or... Keep playing, zombie. As she traces your arms and chest, you suddenly notice she seems to be examining your scars. She withdraws her talons, flicks them twice, and bends forward and examines some of the tattoos on your chest. Hmm, who write on you? I ever do that? No respect for zombies. Zombies, not paintings. She sniffs and pokes one of your scars. This one bad shape. Many scars, no preserves. Wait. The talons suddenly hook into the thread you brought her. 
and lightning like she jabbed another talon into the skin near one of your scars it feels barely more than a pinprick but it looks like she's about to start stitching you up let her work updated my journal the sensation is curiously painless as a Benny begins to stitch up your scars when she is done she sniffs you frowns and stabs her fingers into the embalming fluid within minutes she has dabbed your body with the fluid and strangely enough it makes you feel better let her work this may be the second time in my, my life I'm thankful I don't have a nose. Eve Annie puts the last touches on your body, gives you another sniff, nods, and then makes a shooting a shooing motion with her talons. Done. Go, go. Got an extra little life point on that. Lovely. Alright. Well, I'll do for now. Quick save. And uh we went a bit over time. Um Trying to make these half an hour long, but I was talking so much that I thought we'd do a bit more. So, uh, thank you for watching. I know it's very dialogue heavy, and this first episode we haven't really done much, but we'll, we'll, we'll do a lot more later on, trust me. This is it's a slow burner, but it's a good one. So, thanks for watching, and join me next time where we probably leave the mortuary. I hope so. Bye!